<laughs> if that was if nope. that was a dragon, no. Nope. Uh, there were two. <laughs> they were pretty. No. Nope. There's actually oh, three if you include uh, Roku's pet dragon. That's fair. Shit. Okay, so bad example. Um, but right. here's the thing: they were at least like they fit nope. in the traditional ah. more Asian dragons, which is to say they're more associated with rain and rivers than fire. Mm -hmm. Oh. You oh. get because in Asian in Southeast Asian culture, if you see a dragon, it's usually the personification of a large local river. Like Haku. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was about to bring up Haku from Spirited Away. He's literally the personification of the of a river. That's pretty neat. Kahaku River. Yep. Oh. Okay. okay, so dragon's very bad example for something fantasy like stick and have its own. What about like werewolves? Since we're going over the list now, there um, I think you're going. I think we're going too much into like FMA territory at that point. Oh, okay. Oh, Full Metal Alchemist, right? Yeah, remember Chimeras? Mm. Mom. I kind of never watched Full Metal Alchemist, so. <gasps> okay, uh, it'd be a really good show, uh, but to get the reference, um. A big theme is that uh, the two main characters are in the military, and they uncover a lot of military black projects, including a secret force of humans where um, there was an alchemist that was doing, like, unethical research to make, um, even though he was still funded by the state, to make uh, human-animal hybrids with alchemy, and they just dismiss his experiments as failure and something horrifying, but it turns out Oh, not only were they successful, uh, they did, they fully weaponized it by midway in the show. So there was, oh. of course, the people who are chimeras and can go into like this weird half animal, half human hybrid with superpowers. I like the snake girl. Yeah, oh, like oh, the way she dies! It's so oh. good. That was so intimidating. Yeah. Was, the minute you brought that up, all I could think was, oh wait, that no, wait. This is why you do not fuck with Edward B. Bradley. Edward? Shut yeah. Up, Dad. <laughs> no, no, but it, seriously, that scene, I love it because it's. I love every scene where uh, King, where Fury King Bradley is shown to be like ruthlessly hardcore about something. Especially when he like never breaks a smile. Yeah. Or, when um, you're first introduced to him, you're just like, oh yeah, you know, how's it going, Ed? Everything's all happy-go-lucky. No. And then you just see him fucking slice somebody apart in like two seconds. And he actively enjoys it, too. Oh yeah. And, uh, and I think one of the, a few of the other scenes where I also really enjoyed him, where um, Edward Elric is trying to be the edgy, oh, I could have killed you just now, and then you see his hand is already drawn with the sword, and he's done it so fast, Ed doesn't even know. And he like, essentially verbally is like, bitch smack. Yeah. Excuse Try. me, what did you what did you think you did? <laughs> well, have you known I was a very some... adorable attempt, Edward. You got some pretty lousy security. I could have killed you. <gasps> oh, yeah, but... No, but I, th I I a scene where I did kind of like him. I love it because it, I love it because this scene conveyed so much like venom, and I kind of like when a venomous line is delivered just right. When he mentioned that he was clenching his fist at my, what was it, at Miles? The funeral. Yeah, and then he, you find out he's not clenching his fist because he's sad. He was just irritated about his daughter. Yeah, like, like screaming for her dad. Yeah, like infuriatingly irritated with her. That was a, that wasn't a clench of I miss him. That is a clench of this little shit should shut up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Ah, was, and yet I love the. Yeah, I love the brutality of that, though. I know, but I loved Maze Hughes so much. <laughs> I did, too. Like, he's just so adorable. But also, like, even in the original series, like, some of my favorite parts with, uh, Bradley was, like, he's constantly sneaking away from his guards. Yeah. And just popping up randomly. Like, you think he's literally, like, just this really funny dude, and it's just like, nope, he is terrifying. Or, uh, here's another one. The time when, um, he single-handedly recaptures his own base and takes out a tank with a sword. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's not forget, the man fucking walked up to his fucking fortress mansion, which was which loaded with fucking enemy personnel, like, already fucking hostily taken over, 
Like, literally, it is a fortified fucking fortress at this point. And he just says, do they really expect me to enter my own house from the back fucking door? Fuck that shit. And he just fucking runs in and slaughters everybody. Including a tank. With including a sword. A tank. <laughs> it's the epitome of just because you know I'm coming doesn't mean you can stop me. Literally, yes. And then he proceeded to almost kill Scar. Ah. Yeah. Do they really expect me to enter through the back door of my own palace? Also, I wonder what Scar's defining feature is. Uh, arms. No, that's yeah, the funny part, is you're right. <laughs> 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 Armed and dangerous. Arms, but also not only- they're not even his arms. He just- Yeah, what- well Literally, the, ah! the arm that gives him his power is from his brother. Yep. I mean, one of them is his arm. Damn it! Ah. Also, I'm seeing a question brother? for Aeon saying, which do you prefer, FMA or Brotherhood? Well, here's the thing, I appreciate, I appreciate the original FMA just because it had interesting ideas in it ah! that are legitimately cool. I do think that Brotherhood has better pacing, but I like the details that the first one went through. Hmm. Yeah, I preferred Brotherhood. I do. I, yeah, I still prefer it, but I like. I kind of wish some of the extra shit from the other one also kind of made it in a little yeah. bit. Well, but it's not like a deal breaker. Like Brotherhood doesn't need improvement. It. it would just be cool. I think it's just more along the lines of there are a couple of things, because like in the original, like the whole no. Maze Hughes arc was. I don't want to say, like, more well done, but I felt like it was more fleshed out in the original as compared yeah. to Brotherhood. Yeah, because you got, you got to actually know him. In Brotherhood, they expect you to have already seen the original, so they don't bother letting well, you get to know him. It's closer to the manga, too. Yeah. Um. But, like, in the first, you, you could tell that they really wanted you to feel that, uh, that death. Yeah, you could tell, yeah, you could easily tell that. Um. I'm kind of glad that Wrath ah, isn't the... It. that they changed who Wrath was, because I thought the Wrath in the first one was an annoying little shit who totally deserved to die. Also, such a cop-out. Yeah, it like, is totally yeah, just, a cop-out. Just make him look like your most popular character. Ah, I mean, damn it! And he was also just kind of annoying all around, and I didn't really believe in his character arc. I thought it was just kind of there, and it would have been better if he got... Yeah. Um, I, I really liked how they changed it in... Um, Brotherhood to make uh, Bradley as Wrath, and they fucking did it so goddamn well too. I it, also was, it was such a fucking mind fuck when that came across. Like, oh, fuck. Can I also appreciate how competently they wrote uh, Mustang? Because I was like, okay, please don't tell me when Envy is about to do the whole change into a shape thing that he's not going to have a trauma breakdown because he clearly he knows he's dead. I'm like, thank fuck. Thank you, Wickedy yeah. Cat, for the donation. <laughs> Yeah, that's my favorite fucking part is just, is he, just he's sitting there, is, he's just like, yeah, no, you're gonna fucking change into my dead friend that you fucking killed right in front of me? What the fuck is wrong with you? Fuck you. Yeah, and he, torture, and he tortures him to the point of, that he's like, Envy is like screaming. Yeah, like literally, he's just constantly boiling his eyes and tongue just like no fuck you oh yeah what you you fucking got your tongue back after 20 seconds here fucking grow that grow it back after another 20 seconds fucker oh here's another 20 seconds here's another 20 seconds Jeez. i've ever told no. you the definition of insanity no no it's not insanity it's like sloth or envy finds that torturing because envy regenerates but can still feel all of it so he has yeah, to feel it again, his tongue and, and eyes again. Fucking oh, so he's, he's straight up, he's straight up tasting pain. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You and know, he has to relive it every twenty seconds. I could just I imagine that it would be an amplified feeling of sticking your tongue between the two little edges of one of those D batteries. Oh, uh, why? It's, it's way worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I just like, think it's really <laughs> funny that when Envy changes into his monster form, because he th because that seemed to work so well with Ed and Mustang, just like, okay, yeah, you just made yourself a bigger target, dipshit, thanks. Yep. Alright, thank you for the donation, uh, Skyblaze. We're at 369! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
nice. 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 I mean, I do have to get, though. I like that they made fire into something that is supposed to be dangerous because I think too many anime and too many things like nerf it. I'm just like, and all the shows that like nerf it, it's like, it probably would have killed the enemy, but they had to do it. But apparently the writer just couldn't write well enough to balance it, so they have to pretend it's a it's bullshit and doesn't work. Thank you, Full Metal Alchemist, for actually having more realistically threatening fire and actually knowing how to write it. What is it with you and gri being grimly realistic with, like, pain and suffering? Well, well you see, it makes well. things compelling. Yeah, yeah but you, you have to do it in the right way, though. How about breaking arms, Peter? Oh, <laughs> is there something I'm missing? No, uh, he knows what I'm referring to. It was something in a D&D &D session where, without spoiling anything, a character was restrained, and my solution was, oh wait, she can't move, takes away her weapon. Oh wait, I have another action, I break her arm. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, kind of the vibe that Peter was feeling extra mean that day. Yeah. Um, you made your you made a character that was twice his level have to run away from him. I was quite proud of myself. <laughs> and he's like, well, I dealt 11 damage, I have 85 health. I was almost about at the end of the fight, after Bata gives a weapon back, I was almost about to have oi, to oi, 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 oi. I'm not spoiling. Well, okay, fine. I was saying what I was almost about to say because of how the fight went. I was almost about to have Bata smile and say, pitiful. Pathetic. Wow. <laughs> it's honestly, at this point, I'm generally with a whatever with that fight, because... reasons. But, yeah. It's a thing that happened, and I'm not even gonna try to front. Peter kicked ass that day. Mm -hmm. Wait, he broke arms that day. <laughs> I scared animals. <laughs> a lot of it. Yeah, I, I would be afraid to have the two of you in a campaign together. I it would be brilliant. It'd be a lot of fun. It would be horrifying. You you too. That's only <laughs> happened once. That happened in Curse of Strahd. Yeah, with Golden Fox and not Golden Fox. Um. Well, yeah, that was Golden Hi. Fox's character originally, but uh. Yeah. uh <laughs> Jush. Sorry, I, like I, Doki's mad at me. <laughs> About that very fight, he's pissed off now. <laughs> Angie. You want to know what did, what I actually noticed, and I think I might use this more often, is that there is... I obviously talk to you in PM about how there, I can use it in character, but mm -hmm. I want to point out, I was... Um, I'd only just discovered this effect on the thing I was using, but I had to be like... The session, I, um, we kept forgetting when it was, and then we realized, oh right, last minute. So to give myself some social energy, um, I did some alchemy. I took a hit of acetate to make myself more social. Um, so I was, but apparently the, uh, the, uh, white fire that I'm on apparently has a side effect that, um, it makes you way more confident, but if you're in a competition, you're a lot more aggressive. Is that why you got extra mean that day? I mean, it also fits in character. It does fit in character, but normally you're at just, in my experience, you're more laid back comparatively. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm not I'm not getting upset. It's just an observation. No, no, I'm not saying I'm not getting upset with you. I don't know why you're getting defensive. Cuz I'm used to people getting upset when I say things. Oh. Well, I'm just sad. Mm, no. Like Doggy right probably... now, he's still yelling at me. Oof. Yes, but Doggy yelling is adorable. I mean, Doki. true. Doki. <laughs> What's that golden? What are you grinding for? Uh, to refill the, um, uh, the two urns. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny? I... Dogi is listening... <laughs> Dogi is listening to the stream, so the second it got said that, <laughs> that his yelling is adorable, he got pissed off. 
Yay! Oh, is he like rain so hard? Hello, Dogi. We love you. You are adorable. Is Dogi in my server? Huh? Is Dogi in my so. server? Hold on, I'll check. I don't no, know. he's not. So. Hey, what are you hitting me for, you little shit? I didn't say it. <laughs> no, he's not. Nice. Oh crap. Here. Uh, it was me. Who said what? Wait. I said that Dogi is adorable when he is yelling. Wasn't me. What? Stop it! I didn't do anything! I'm going to assume that that was a hit, because I don't want to play around with this. You guys are getting me killed in Minecraft! 